The tropical forests on the planet have a significant impact on biodiversity and climate. Nowhere is this more evident than in the Amazon. Between 10 and 15% of all the species found on land live here. The woodlands store approximately 100 to 120 billion tons of carbon. And the Amazon rain generates about 15% of all fresh water that flows into the world's oceans. But the Amazon has been threatened by massive deforestation and exploitation. But maybe the tide has turned and we will see a new role for the Amazon in a high-tech future. An iconic city, isn't it? We have come to Rio because this year's laureate will be giving a speech here. Let's go and meet him. As a scientist, he spent more than 30 years of research on the Amazon rainforests. Hello. Good to see you. Something that has affected him deeply. That taught me to have a tremendous respect and admiration by the way the forest functions by the climate and the interaction between the biosphere, the vegetation, the plants and the, the atmosphere. All those things really put an imprint on my life. My values are very related to maintain the vitality of the ecosystems in the Amazon, almost like a, a serious motivation in my life. So why don't we leave Rio and go to the Amazon and have a look ourselves? Yes, with pleasure. As a young scientist, he began there. And he understands that if we lose the Amazon, we lose everything. It took us a few hours uh, to get here, but finally we're here at the research station K34. We're surrounded by hundreds of square kilometers of untouched rainforest. What scientists have done here is to build towers to come over the canopy of the rainforest. Okay, let's go. Here we go. We want to understand how the forest below interact with the atmosphere. What amount of water vapor the atmosphere and the forest exchange? Carbon dioxide, this unit here is exactly to measure carbon dioxide, how photosynthesis is operating, whether the forest is, is a major carbon sink. Now we know it's a very important carbon sink. So we built many towers in the Amazon. This is one of them. And this one started operating in the year 2000, so we have continuous measurement of all these quantities. So the tower is a very good tool for researchers to come here. Hundreds of researchers from all over the world use this site as a base. And the idea is really to protect them. I mean, we have pretty much 4 million square kilometers of this beautiful tropical forest. For years there has been grave concern about the deforestation of the Amazon and the conversion of rainforest into pasture for livestock or for large-scale cultivation of crops. But development has slowed and deforestation has fallen by nearly 80% over the last 10 years. Brazilians, they don't like deforestation. You can ask anyone in the country and deforestation is seen as something evil. It is mainly legislation and enforcement that has slowed down deforestation. I think it's because the government has lots of uh, like a politics law in that way. But also the lack of profitability in tropical area agriculture. There's no point in coming here, for instance, and try agriculture in the standards of the Green Revolution. Like, the soils doesn't hold, the climate doesn't help, as you can see. But it's very hot here. Oh yeah, yeah, and never get used to it. <laughs> 
sometimes completely new species to science appear as like birds or soil fauna it's in fungi you know these are prone to discoveries like every week if you actually look at this detail there are some studies that point to the direction of like 16,000 trees in the Amazon we probably know about four thousand species of trees for instance so there is still a lot to learn Tapping the Amazon's current biodiversity with countless living organisms and using the latest technological advances can lead to a new industrial revolution. Think of tropical forests in a radically different way. There is a lot of economic potential to create a new economic paradigm that's based mostly on the biological assets through the fourth industrial revolution techniques, biotechnology, gene editing, biomimicry. Entrepreneur Juan Carlos Castillo Rubio is the former CEO of the Silicon Valley based Planetary Skin Institute, which was co founded by the US space agency NASA. Together with Carlos Nobre, he has advocated a new role for the rich biodiversity in the Amazon. Naturally, the Amazon has accumulated over millions of years huge amount of knowledge. It's kind of an Alexandria library. And that is an inspiration to develop new technologies in artificial intelligence, in robotics, in nanotechnology, in genomics, in many, many fields that are hugely important for this fourth industrial revolution. It's kind of a Silicon Valley of biodiversity, of bioassets. Carlos wants to leave a legacy and inspire young scientists, engineers, and from all disciplines uh, in order to execute this vision over a long time. You need someone that ins inspires that vision, and that person is Carlos. Carlos Nobre did his doctoral thesis at the MIT in Boston, then returned to Brazil, where he's had a long career with high-level positions in the academic world and in government. He's also been very active in the international scientific community, developing policy applications and earth system analysis. Well, first of all, he has been uh, one of the chief advisors to the UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. His role there was extremely valuable in bringing the um, sustainability issues up the agenda. He has an engineering mindset. Carlos is a fantastic person, you know. He's uh, a kind of person that uh, always helps people to get things done. He's extremely generous. Anyone in the street asks him a question and he will go out of his way to communicate what he knows in a way, in a way that that other person, junior scientist or uh, layman or taxi driver would understand because he's a great communicator. So that's one end of him. On the other, he is extremely demanding. Carlos can be tough. He's a very high level of performance expectation. He demands it on himself and he demands it on his teams. This is good. You don't do great things without making a few enemies, I think. And I believe this very high standard is why he has left so many legacies. Those things will lead to a new Amazon future. And he will be remembered for that. The biological systems in the Amazon are the results of millions of years of development. They are clearly now in the balance. There are still the threats of deforestation and climate change can lead to a tipping point with forest die-off. But there is now a new understanding of the potential of the rich biodiversity that may shape the future of the Amazon. <laughs>